It's my very great pleasure to join with you today on the 30th anniversary of the university, as well as in honor of the 70th anniversary of the European Convention on Human Rights. And if I may add also the 20th anniversary of the negotiation of the European uh, Fundamental Rights Charter. I'm very sorry that my presence is virtual and that I can't be with you, not least because I missed the opportunity of joining together with the new member of the Fundamental Rights Agency Management Board, Professor Dr. Lira Yakulevecene. I've been asked colleagues to speak to the issue of fundamental rights catalogues and times of crisis. I welcome this opportunity because it speaks to much of what I have been doing during my career. Almost 30 years ago, I was in Bosnia-Herzegovina on behalf of the United Nations tasked with chronicling the conflict there in terms of human rights. It was a new kind of work. We weren't sure how to do it. We had only limited success, reflected in some reference to human rights in the peace agreement, some reference to human rights in the eventual prosecution of war criminals. A few years later, another conflict, Sierra Leone in West Africa. Again there, I had a similar task with some more experience uh, to build on. And we indeed had more success. By framing the conflict in terms of the human rights categories, we were able to put human rights strongly in both the peace process and the peace agreement, and human rights was very directly visible in terms of the prosecution of war criminals. Fast forward to today. We are all immersed in a common crisis, this time not of conflict, but no less significant and problematic for that. And just as those conflicts were profoundly issues of human rights, so today's uh, um, crisis of the COVID-19 pandemic. This is an issue of human rights from at least three directions. In the first place, it's about upholding, standing up for the human rights of health and of life itself. It's an issue of human rights in terms of the limitations to our rights and the extent to which those necessary limitations of our rights respect such important legal principles as necessity, proportionality, non-discrimination, and even legality itself. And third and no less important, this crisis is one of human rights because of its impact and the impact of the measures to tackle it on already marginalized groups, people already on the edges of our societies, such as, for example, the Roma community, about which my agency is particularly concerned at the present moment. And so we are in a crisis, a crisis of human rights, and yet we face a paradox. This crisis of COVID-19 is rarely spoken of as an issue of human rights. We don't see human rights full center of decision making, at least not expressly so. National human rights institutions are doing their best but I think we as societies need more. We need more visibility of human rights to guide our policymakers in the crucial decisions for our lives and our welfare. Today, I would focus the attention on the role of academics. I applaud what academics, including many of you, are doing in response to the situation, but I would suggest we can do still more, medium and long term, in terms of our academic writing and our contribution to jurisprudence, but also right now in terms of the public debate, bringing our human rights normative, legal, intellectual contribution into the contemporary debates at national, regional and international levels, drawing on the European Convention on Human Rights, the other instruments, our constitutions, but also most relevantly on the European Charter of Fundamental Rights. Much of the impact of COVID and the responses engage EU competency. We should make the Charter far more visible in our reflections uh, on uh, the, the issues that arise. It's not either or, by the way, convention or charter. To the contrary, they're profoundly interactive. And in order to understand the Charter, we must pay close attention to the provisions and the jurisprudence of the convention. Now, as you negotiate your way through these issues, I can offer you the solid support of the EU Agency of Fundamental Rights uh, through our work, our analysis and our engagement. And of course, I wish you all the best for today's event. Thank you.